Hi, this is Don White and welcome to God's Money. I'm with my great friend, Colin Holloway, who is a financial advisor, life insurance agent uh, here in Jupiter, Florida. And Colin, I, I, I'm really glad you stopped by today because I, I just thought it'd be kind of cool for us to have like a little discussion, just to talk, you know, don't, don't feel, you know, this thing is in your way. This is podcast, baby. This is the right. beautiful part of a podcast is you can totally screw up and nobody cares. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm... I've been in the life insurance business, as you know, forever. You've been in it for a long time. And it's a pretty interesting business. I mean, it is why we got where we are today in many, in many respects. I don't think we really understand the life insurance business until we understand what it really does. And we were talking before about, uh, about this one guy that you knew that uh, had an accident. Tell me a little bit about that guy. I'm just curious as to what, what happened and what right. I can share with everybody. Right, so a friend of mine um, and, and, now, and a client prior to, but um, was in a fishing trip in Costa Rica with a bunch of buddies for a 40th birthday party, was in a, a golf cart, fell out of the golf cart, had a head injury. Uh, out of the 38 years old attorney had a head injury wow. in a coma for a week. Lots of medical expenses. Fortunately for him and his family, a year and a half, two years beforehand, I had actually insulated him and his partners on a individual disability product. Now, a lot of people don't think about disability. They think about medical insurance. Obviously, he had medical insurance, I assume. Yes, he did. Yeah, so obviously the medical insurance took care of the hospital and the maybe the transportation, I'm thinking a little bit, and those kinds of things, right? I mean, the basic medical expenses. Right, so there are there are all the medical expenses with regards to the injury itself was taken care of. Right, but you're talking about something different. You're talking about a policy which is gonna give him an income for a long time, potentially for the rest of his life almost, right? Right, so we structured it in a way which it was paid to age 67, you know, provided that you still meet the criteria of being And why'd disabled. you pick 67? Because at our age, and he's just a little bit younger than me, the Social Security retirement age is 67 for him. Oh, so okay, so at, at 67, that's when Social Security kicks in, and so uh, the insurance company has, to, it has a provision where they cut back the benefit if he's still on claim. Right, so it actually stops at age 67. Oh, okay. So, so it's not just it's now, just it's not now, just reduced by the Social Security. It actually stops. At no, it stops at sixty-seven, and then that's when full Social Security would then kick in. So, how time. much money are we talking about? Well, um, his particular policy was based on his income when we when we underwrote it, and so he was getting he is getting now nine thousand dollars a month tax free. You're talking about over a hundred thousand dollars a year. This insurance company is going to be protecting him for. Quick math, doing that, I'm going three million dollars potentially. He could receive, or, he, or his family could receive, assuming he lived that long, uh, from this this policy. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, it, it's it's interesting because one of the things that we forget about when we talk about insurance is just how big a deal we are as people. I have this expression, Colin. I think I may have even told you this before. It's kind of like if you had uh, a machine and that machine was over there in that corner, and it was pumping out every single day uh, $1,000. Right. Every single day it pumps out $1,000, and it did that five days a week, 50 weeks out of the year. How much would you insure it for? Would you be willing to maybe take a little bit out of that income, maybe instead of getting $1,000, maybe you'd take, I don't know, 950. You say, let's take that 50, give it to somebody who guarantees that that income is gonna continue for another 30 years. Would that be something to be worth doing? Oh, totally. In a hundred, yeah, hundred and that's, I think that's what people forget. You know, I mean, insurance is so big a deal. You know, talk about, oh, I'm insurance poor or whatever. If you really think about the idea that you're just going to take a little bit of your income and you're going to set it aside just in case somebody steals that machine, somebody breaks that machine, right. that machine goes away, we want to be, be able to do that. And so this disability, though, is really something that, that I don't think a lot of people think about. Well, they really don't. And one of the things that I just put it in simple terms is when I ask people when I'm sitting with them, I ask them what their greatest asset is. Mm. And a lot of people say, oh, it's my house, it's my 401k, it's money I have in the stock market. And I said, well, let me ask you this question. If you can have all that, and if you lost it all, is it replaceable? And usually the answer is yes. Sure. But I also say, if something happens to you, isn't your biggest asset your ability to wake up in the morning and generate an income? Mm. And so that's when they go, the bell goes off and they go, oh man, that's a great, I, that's a great topic. And so that's what facilitates the conversation of understanding disability insurance. And people always think nothing's ever going to happen to me, Don. Right. Uh, you know, and I'm a perfect walking example. I could have not gotten up 10 months ago today when I had a triple bypass open heart surgery at age 46. 
There's no doubt about it. I, you know, folks, I can't tell you how big a deal life insurance and disability is, but I want to just share with you a, an email that I got just this week. It says, hello, Don. Uh, my name is Katie, your client's daughter. Not sure how much you have heard uh, about my dad, who is currently in the hospital recovering from a significant surgery. He's doing well. Uh, it's very disappointing because they took 20 pounds of the disease out and they were only able to take 75% of the cancer. And this prognosis is very disappointing because as my dad recovers from this huge surgery, he has to face the reality that he is not cancer free. He's very heavy laden, as you can imagine. Nonetheless, he wanted me to send you an email to thank or to say a huge thank you for helping him set up his life insurance. He said, I am so very thankful that he helped take care of my wife. You are clearly a very important person to my parents and I too, feel so grateful that you are part of their lives. Thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do on behalf of my parents, Katie. What do you think about a, an email like that? Tingles up your spine. It, it does. Yeah. I, it's just, you know, sometimes, you know, we talk about the financial gratification and so forth that, you know, that we get in, in doing these businesses that we're involved in. I think sometimes the emotional gratification is even bigger. You know, the fact that we know we're actually doing something that's going to help these people. What do you think about it? I mean, you know, it's, it's fascinating. Well, I mean, I look forward to emails like that. I've only been in the life insurance business for 10 years. I mean, we all know that you've been in it a little bit longer than that. I'm old. <laughs> Folks, I am old, and I've been doing it since I was 12. <laughs> Moby Dick was a minnow. Thank you so much for coming by, Colin. I really appreciate you being here, man. It was awesome. My and pleasure. You know, always great talking with you. Always great sharing uh, these things. Hey, if you want to know more about God's Money, go on our website, godsmoney.com. Obviously, we get all that uh, social media stuff and so forth at the end of the video. And uh, we'll see you next time.